have already studied what is recombination today we will see the types of recombination and i am going to emphasize on general or homologous recombination apart from the homologous recombination there are various types i will mention here that is illegitimate or non homologous recombination there is site specific recombination and there is replicative recombination let's just rush through the definitions we will see in detail afterwards general recombination occurs between dna molecules of very similar sequences means the nitrogen based sequences they need to be 100% similar sequence similar means the arrangement of nitrogen bases on both the strands they resemble 100% a question may arise what is the need for exchange of such a strand which is so similar in its composition the answer to this is well known that two similar dna sequences are different in their functions because of the methyl groups which are present on individual nitrogen bases they are different means a difference in the methylation of the bases makes these two homologously similar strands different in their gene expression capacities so we are trying to understand the recombination of such homologous dna the second type is illegitimate or non homologous recombination where there is a recombination where there is no similarity or we can say no large scale similarity there is there may be somewhat similarity but usually a non homologous type of recombination inserts the dna and at in, insertion is at random points resulting into mutations we will see that in detail afterward the next example is site specific recombination which occurs between two short sequences on two different dna only the part of the region where they are undergoing a recombination that uh, contact point of the dna which ranges from 12 to 24 base pairs in e coli it is seven base pairs only that much site specificity is needed rest of the dna may not be homologous in its nature the fourth type of recombination is replicative recombination where totally new copy or a new segment of a dna is generated today i would like to throw some light on general or homologous so recombination let us see homologous recombination in detail the prime requirements of homologous recombination to take place is two dna molecules with similar or almost identical base pairs this is first dna let us say this is second dna okay this is the first requirement the second requirement is a chi sequence on the dna chi sequence it is specifically g c t g g t g g from 5 dash to 3 dash end and it is a sequence which is very specific for reg bcd protein and it is recognized by reg bcd protein so the third immediate requirement is reg bcd protein which separates the double stranded dna it has two functions it has to be noted that there are two functions of reg bcd proteins these two functions the first is separating the double stranded dna of the region where it binds that is a helicase activity and the second function is it degrades the nucleotides and it is a exonuclease activity so this to facilitate when it separates one of the strand needs to be protected so the immediate fourth requirement is a rec a protein which functions as a single stranded binding protein just like the uh, proteins in the dna replication so it is a single strand protecting protein after that when the strand and branch they migrate as we will see in the animation there is a need for filling up the gap or uh, extending the strand that is replicative enzymes are required and dna polymerases more specifically three is also required but here dna polymerase one is shown in this animation but it has to be remembered that three also may be needed then as every metabolic or genetic process is needing it is a energy rich process lots and lots of energy will be required that is sufficed here by atp 
otherwise one has to remember that all the four nitrogen bases they are energy rich compounds not only atp what is atp adenosine triphosphate just like that cytosine triphosphate guanine triphosphate uracil triphosphate all these thymine triphosphate all these are energy rich compounds and they can suffice the energy requirements but in this process atp is required and when the whole process is over it results into small uh, unjoint gaps in the dna which has to be filled with dna ligase so we'll just proceed to see how this homologous recombination takes place during this homologous recombination as you can see the very first step is rec bcd binding to the end one end of the double stranded dna molecule now as the animation proceeds you see there is somewhere here there will be a chi site reached let us say this is a chi site somewhere approximately i am showing so till that chi site it reads it has a nuclease activity it has a nuclease activity means it goes on degrading the dna one of the strands of the dna once it reaches the chi site this chi site has two functions first function is it removes the nucleus activity of the rec bcd protein see what happens here as you can see one of the strand that is from 3 dash to 5 dash this strand is degraded okay it is degraded to nucleotides and it will be subjected to nucleotide pool as always in genetic processes the cell is readily in need of de novo nucleotides one which is not coming through the metabolic pathway of synthesis but some genetic processes where dna is degraded and it gets readily available nucleotides so that is subjected to the nucleotide pool and as you can see rec bcd helicase activity okay so here it is a exonuclease activity and here this is a helicase activity it is unwinding the strands but you see very interestingly here there is a loop maintained why that is so because while degrading the speed of degradation slows down the process of translocation what is translocation movement of this uh, rec bcd protein okay translocation is what you just saw that is movement of the rec bcd protein on the dna so the translocation process may slow down to halt that slowing uh, sorry to maintain the speed a loop is taken in the rec bcd protein and degradation is maintained then what happens this after those these two functions you see it reaches the chi sequences okay rec bcd as i just explained maintains a loop forms a loop because dna which is being unwound it is faster than the nucleotides which are being degraded to maintain the speed rec bcd dna forms a loop one thing second rec bcd as you can see here continues to unwind the helicase activity continues to unwind the dna and uh, it keeps degrading until the chi sequence is reached this is a rec bcd it reaches the chi sequence and at the chi sequence it loses its helicase uh, nuclease activity helicase activity is still on it loses its nucleus activity and it retains it goes on removing the hydrogen bonds that is the helicase activity so what has happened here as you can see here this strand it is intact once rec bcd passes the chi site its 3 dash to 5 dash exonuclease activity is inhibited helicase activity is still on okay it is still functional and the process continues then what happens is once the strand separation has been over dna polymerase comes into action and it fills the gap dna polymerase it fills the gap once the means again you can see it's a replicative process so now there are three strands okay three strands are there the single stranded binding proteins like rec a they bind and they protect 
the single stranded DNA uh, which is left undegraded by the RecBCD protein. Okay, then the incoming DNA it forms a homology means it just uh, gets attached to this strand and the rec a it unwinds the double stranded dna promoting some base pairing of the complementary nucleotides of the incoming dna a process which is known as assimilation okay, assimilation there is a process of assimilation and this occurs at this point the dna this one strand and this second strand of incoming dna they will undergo a strand exchange so as it moves on as you can see the single stranded dna rec a double stranded dna complex we will call this as you can see here this is the single stranded dna okay then rec a double stranded this is this is the double stranded dna and here on this single strand there was as you can see here there was a rec a so this complex is called as the single stranded rec a double stranded dna complex this further stimulates the unwinding of the double stranded dna as you can see this this point as it moves further it goes on unwinding the dna okay then simultaneously as you can see there is a alignment of the single strand this is called as branch migration and this creates a long stretch of heteroduplex dna this double stranded dna is called as a heteroduplex because still this strand is intact this is not removed it has to be removed and at the till that point it will be called as a heteroduplex dna this heteroduplex dna is then converted into a double stranded dna strand by digestion of the displacement loop now this will be as you can say nucleotide pool goes to the nucleotide pool degraded and this was the homologous strand which in your language or in genetic language we call it as the recessive gene now this incoming dna this will be the dominant gene the trait which it is going to bring okay so this uh, this one okay this one it is the one which is dominant so what happens next is the ligase enzyme will seal by introducing a phosphate bond the whole process it requires atp this has to be remembered now a hetero heteroduplex dna has been formed and as you can imagine this one of the dna strand which was incorporated was new here this was the new dna okay and this is how the homologous recombination it takes place in e coli these are the requirements rec bc protein rec a protein the chi site single stranded binding proteins dna polymerase enzyme ligase enzyme and atp and you have a dna which is called as a recombinant dna recombinant dna and this is achieved by homologous strands i hope you understood the process thank you